Hello and uh, welcome to our uh, Bible study here at the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh, glad you're joining me today as uh, the summer is over, school has started, and uh, we continue our education uh, in the Lord through His Word. And uh, it's important that we're always students of God's Word because we're not focusing on a job here per se or, you know, some type of academic achievement here that we're looking forward to heaven and so we want to be prepared and being prepared is always being connected to God through his word so as we begin today let's pray for the holy ministry O shepherd of Israel you created the holy ministry of word and sacrament for us that we may obtain the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints grant that no one should publicly teach in the church or administer the sacraments without rightly ordered call through jesus christ our good shepherd who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god forever amen and so uh tame that tongue that's what we're learning about today uh we think about the weapon that can really harm and kill someone else uh, we talk about our words um but words don't necessarily have to be evil do they uh, words can be good and uplifting, and that's what we want to use our tongue for um, as we think about our life with the Lord and our conforming to his word and being ambassadors of it. So let's continue right along James chapter 3 here. Now many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for we are all, uh, for we all, stumble in many ways and if anyone does not stumble in what he says he is perfect he is a perfect man able also to bridle his whole body um, so as we think about what James is saying here um, he's emphasizing you know that if we are given the position of of speaking uh, to others we need to uh, we're held to a, to a high standard, and what we need to be saying or should be saying is the truth, you know, needs to be factual, needs to be important, and needs to really uh, be that which is pertinent or applicable to the situation at hand. It's kind of like you don't want to have idle body, you don't want to have idle words either. So, who, to whom is James referring with his introductory, my brothers? Referring uh, to the whole congregation may, but with we who teach, James identified with his readers, and that makes my brothers more appropriately understood as the elders or pastors of the house churches. Um, so, you know, it applies certainly to those who teach um, the word of God, but also is applicable to the rest of the congregation you know just as the pastor or leader is subject to god's word so are its members so what was james saying about himself and about local pastors with we all stumble in many ways well you know we as much as we uh work hard in making sure that everything we say um is what needs to be said how it needs to be said you know we ourselves faulty uh, so we are going to stumble at times we're going to make errors at times we're going to say things that we shouldn't say at times um, and so that is a part of our learning and growing um, as we practice the craft that God has given to us you know to major in the truth to major in what God says is a way to avoid certainly false teaching uh, a way to avoid just idle talk but uh, so james confessed his own faults and failings as he reminded his readers that they all stumble in many ways and need to live under the lord's forgiveness um, and so that's important as we think about pastors and teachers those who um, are given the spotlight to to teach and to proclaim that you know there's going to be times when it doesn't go well and we to be generous in forgiveness just as um we expect them of us so for we all stumble in many ways and if anyone does not stumble in what he says he is a perfect man 
also are able also to bridle his whole body. How would the fact that a preacher or teacher does not stumble in what he says enable him to bridle his whole body? And here's we're talking about discipline, right? So preachers and teachers' tongues, their preaching and teaching can have serious effects on their congregation if they are never at fault, but keep their preaching and teaching consistent with the word and the gospel of Jesus. They lead their people along the way of life. So, you know, we stay true to God's word. Um, we as we heard last week's text, don't add to it, don't subtract from it, right? In Deuteronomy chapter 4, all preachers and teachers stumble sometimes in their preaching and teaching, but James's words encourage us to work hard to become perfect in understanding the word and in presenting its truth. So that's what we want to be as good students, right? As great students um, to really continue our understanding of the word so that we can proclaim it with the boldness and truth for which uh, God would have us to do. Um, but again, you know, we are uh, fallen people. So uh, we may, you know, at times stumble, but uh, we got to keep pressing on and continue to strive um, for less stumbling and to be uh, the kind of proclaimers of the word that God would have us to be. Too much at stake, right? not to speak the truth and to speak the truth in love. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. They are so large and are driven by strong winds. They are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. So how great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. So what do the bit and the rudder and the spark have in common in James' three illustrations? Uh, they are small in comparison to the horse, the boat, and the forest they affect. So again, one word, one uh, word of truth, one false word can have a great impact, will have a great impact on those who receive it. So we need to be careful in what we say and how we say it. And as Christians, as followers of the word, we let the word guide our instruction and our, and our teaching so that we can remain in the truth. So how is this spark different from the bit and rudder in the effect it brings? This is the challenge. But a small fire may start a fire that destroys a whole forest. And sadly, we've all encountered the effects of this, haven't we? Um, saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. And it destroys a relationship, and then it destroys the relationships around it. Um, it starts and um, it is um, sets everything ablaze, and everything is destroyed around it just because of that one word that was spoken, that one word. So you have to be very careful and very guarded by it. How may the tongue of a preacher or a member become like a spark in the church forest? Well, so this is the duality of uh, the tongue. So on the one hand, like so many other things in our world, it can be abused and used incorrectly, but it also can be used correctly. And when we tame it, when we um, conform it to the word of God, you know, it is that which proclaims law and gospel. It is that which gives life um, that comes through Jesus. So and we, knew we need to also take that to heart and uh, still proclaim with boldness and confidence uh, the word that we have received. Um, so it's important, um, you know, not just to uh, feel like, oh, my gosh, I can't say anything because it's going to be faulty or I'm going to stumble but to to think about it and to be carefully calculated in it um, and to uh, maintain our our focus or a foundation in the truth that will alleviate hopefully you know negative negative consequences for what we say and the tongue is a fire uh, a world of unrighteousness the tongue is set among our members 
staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird or reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. So on the one hand, we're given the opportunity to uh, tame it and to master it. And we also find, just like the rest of our body, that it's corrupted by sin. And so, you know, to, to have it 100% perfect and not stumble is impossible. But it also doesn't mean that we um, don't try at all to do so. So James goes beyond the small fire. He says, a tongue is a fire, uh, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staying the whole body, staying on fire the entire course of life and set on fire by hell. He likes triads, statements that progressively develop a point. Here the movement is from the fire of the tongue just corrupting to its setting of flame, to hell itself being behind it all. So why is the tongue singled out as a member of the body that is most capable of harming both the speaker and other people? It's the communication tool and reveals the thoughts of the heart. So we heard recently too, as Jesus said, it's not what goes into the body that makes a man unclean, but what comes out of a man, of a man's heart that makes him unclean. And so the tongue is communicating those things, and it can be that which is corrupted by the devil and evil, or that which is good and right. So giving expression to what the small, sinful mind is thinking hurts the speaker, and it reinforces the thoughts and urges their expression and actions. Now people say that, you know, if, if we, what we uh, consume ourselves with, what we are uh, attaching ourselves with most uh, closely is the way we carry out our lives, the way we live, the way we speak. And so that is something to be mindful of. And so the tongue turns in not to be something that is, again, a blessing and used to proclaim the gospel, but rather to promote um, evil and to conduct evil. So why can no man tame the tongue? Well, uh, because as Christians, we work to bring our bodies under control by the word and the spirit. But on this side of heaven, the struggle will go on. Happily, when our sinful nature causes us to stumble into sinful expression of sinful thoughts, the Spirit prompts us to renew our life in Jesus through repentance and faith. So, um, so I confess that I have sinned. You know, the tongue says that um, after the tongue has committed evil. So we fortunately have with rescue and refuge in Jesus who then speaks the words of forgiveness we need. So with it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be. Does a spring, does a, does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. But James, we confess that from the same mouth come blessing and cursing. We agree these things ought not to be, and we work to overcome this paradoxical behavior. So how can we work in practical ways to overcome our abusive and hurtful use of our tongues? I offered to you earlier that one thing is simply to slow down, right? To think about what you're going to say before you say it and be very purposeful and truthful in what you need to say. So be quick to hear and slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness that God requires. So oftentimes in a heated or volatile situation, that's when we you know, need to take a step back, count to a thousand, count to whatever it takes before we act, before we speak. Uh, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So what do James' little illustrations from nature add to this consideration? That even in nature, we do not find things combined that do not go together or are mutually exclusive. When we agree that the same mouth should not express both praise to God and curses against our fellow man, we really need to do something about it with the help of our Lord and Savior. And the help does come from the, from the word of God. Um, it's truth and purity to conform ourselves to it and to conduct our lives um, in our living and our speaking 
in our thinking, uh, in ways of righteousness, uh, in the ways that God would have us to speak and to live. And so taming the tongue, it's challenging to do. Um, you know, and uh, and sadly, some of it is that uh, we struggle with speaking the truth in love. We struggle with uh, building people up. Uh, we struggle with just being nice. Um, and so what God would have us to do is, you know, use our tongue to praise his name, prayer, praise and thanksgiving. And uh, uh, and it's necessary that we use it correctly for the uh, sharing of the gospel with all people. So uh, thanks for joining me today as we uh, studied God's word again, James chapter three. A lot to think about today um, in our life of conduct. Um, but, you know, like everything in life, we're trying to grow and mature in the way that we live our lives. And the same is true when it comes to our speaking. So thanks again for joining me today. Uh, we continue our Bible study every Wednesday at noon, and then you can catch all the Bible studies on demand anytime at our YouTube channel. So until next time, may God bless your day.